standard. Almighty God, we love you. We praise you. We exalt you. We love 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 you. Bless our service today as we come together, Lord, of one body and accord. Lord, we worship you this morning. We praise you for all things, God. Happy to be the service of God in the church. Well, thank you, Jesus Christ. Go before us and use us, Lord. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for all you're going to do. Where you go, sir? God, just bless you. Thank you for all you've done. Jesus, the family, precious Our name is as well. Praise for the unsaved throughout the world. If you remember, for the prayer of their God. In your will, for this name, we ask for this time. Amen. <laughs> 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody out today. A little crispy this morning. Feels good the weather does. Just thank God for it. Brother Charlie, you want to open up the service with a word of prayer? Our Lord and our Savior, Lord, as we come to you once again, Lord, with thankful hearts, Lord, just thanking you for the church. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you'll be in the midst of us, Lord. Father, we pray right now for your singing, for the singing, for the testimony. Most of all, Lord, we pray for your word. Morning, Lord. Father, we pray if they be a lost or need me to be met this morning, Lord. We pray that you'll take care of them. We'll ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with us to 5.30 in your hymn book.
Somebody like to come up and take up this morning's tithes and offering? We got testimony while he's coming up. Yeah, the I, Lord's been I just want to thank the Lord for answering the prayers and maybe they will be back here today. <laughs> Turn with us, page 317. Somebody else this morning. Never be in my family. Continue to remember that. 
He was out there last night, and he actually heard from the gospel music on TV. The first song he was heard from. Mm. So I know he's under conviction. Amen. Yes, just remember this request. Somebody else. Pray for my son Ryan. Uh, I think he's under conviction a little bit. Um, be with Katie and uh, Mom. Still, if I could, right. <laughs> and pray for Grandma and Grandfather. They are sick. We think they have bronchitis, but they're hard headed. They won't hear the doctor. Surely not. <laughs> and they need to at their age. They're not spring chickens anymore. <laughs> yes. Just remember all this. Uh, Tina, her brother, Tim Pierce, he's um, living his last days, I guess. I don't like to say he's got anything. Just pray for them. Mm -hmm. And they basically don't know how many stands. Yeah. Just remember all these requests. The band that Hannah's in, Meg's band, is on their way to Dayton, probably actually pretty close to there right now for a competition today. I ask you travel mercies for them. Mm -hmm. Also, my friend Ken Hatfield that has come in here a few times, his son's wife was eight months pregnant with a boy, and the umbilical cord got wrapped around his neck, and when he turned into the birth canal, killed him, choked him. She gave birth to us. He was still born Thursday. There was another baby that was still born actually yesterday. They checked her and she there was no heartbeat so they induced her. And then I also remember Jean Heisel as well. Uh, I, there's just a lot of sickness mm -hmm. and where we turn. Sister Cheryl, can you pray Brother Charlie as he gets stronger? Uh, John's mom has not been feeling well, so yeah. all the others. Remember all these requests. Let's not forget all the ones in the nursing homes and the hospitals, too. Remember Sister Paula today. She's been having a lot of problems. And she's not here again today, so. Yeah. Remember her today. Yes, remember her. Pray for her. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. 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 He fell. They were at Callahan Hardware the other day. He tripped over the curb and fell. I mean, she said that they say he cracked a couple ribs and he separated some tendons or something from me, some part of his arm. So I remember him. I mm -hmm. remember her because he's like David is. She's worse off than he is. So yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> now what not? It's rumor, brother Larry. <laughs> Somebody else this morning. Okay. I'll pray for Derek. Yeah, he's doing good. He's found a lot of friends over there. And then they had a basketball game last night. So just pray God keeps his hands on him. Mm -hmm. Somebody else. All unspoken requests. Some hands, I'm sure we all got them. Turn with us to 505. Brother Jamie, lead us first.
Amen. Let's all pray. Almighty God, we love you, we praise you, we exalt you in Jesus. We ask you today, Father, oh God, to come down upon these requests, God, to be heard. Lord, the spoken and the unspoken, Lord, those that are pinned down in the box with Jesus, God. Those names that are written across that scroll, Lord, on the altar today, oh God. I know today it's not you, Lord, that you perish. We've got all these that are battling cancer, Lord Jesus. Lord, these that have lost their loved ones today, God. I pray with Jesus, God, that you just move in their hearts and their lives, Lord. I pray for the Norris family, God, that you bring comfort to them, Father. We love you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. God, strengthen him and his wife today, Lord Jesus. God, I pray, God, help them today, Lord. God, to see and realize there's a reunion today. God, we just go before us and use this, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done, God, all that you're going to do, Lord. Allow your spirit to have control in this service this morning as we worship you, Lord. God, we have to worship you in spirit and truth. We praise you for all things, God. Comfort them, God, that are shut in today. God, be with them, Lord. Those in the hospitals and nursing homes, God. Most of all, them that are sin sick, Lord. Them today, God, have lost their desire to be in your house. God, would you stir their hearts today, Lord. We love you. We praise you in all things. In Jesus' name, let it be done. Amen. Amen. This time the choir is going to bless us with a couple of songs. 416. B. E. E. I said, praise God for my salvation. And how great is God? God is great. He's really, he's really helping out a lot. I love all you guys that got new friends. I've been going here for a little over a year and a half, but I've really been going here for about three months. God, I love God now, and He's turned my life around, and I really, man, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, blessing, Lord, well, just trying to make a love you guys. I want to know that I do anything for you, you yeah, guys, just like God did. You know, you know, I don't mean, think things that I can do, you know, but uh, I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate God, I appreciate your passion, I appreciate this church. I'm very thankful. Thank you. God. Thank you. Bless you, brother. <laughs> I care not to hear what tomorrow may bring. Dear shadow or sunshine or rain.
myself in the morning. Somebody got a special song or testimony for us this morning? You're all awful quiet. I don't jump when I sing. Yep. See, so who's on? <laughs> well, you got to make up for last week. Stand up, say a little bit more. Thank you for being with us. You can be in our first class. I mean, even though some days we don't feel like it, we don't sleep like we get up in the morning. All this stuff, but you know, he's really blessed with us, and he's always there whenever we need. It doesn't matter what time of the day or night. Amen. We call him, he's there. He may not answer the prayer the way we want to answer it, but he always answers it. That's right. Thank you for all the day. Bless you, sis. Somebody else. brother. Well, how y'all doing this morning? Good to be back here with you. you know, I ain't been in a church service yet where there ain't been prayer requests and needs, but uh, I'm glad that whether the Lord sees fit to heal us here on this earth or whether he gives us the ultimate healing, we're all going to be winners either way. Her loved one knew he'd reached the end of life's journey. He'd been holding to God's hand a long, long time. As I knelt beside his bed, my heart was thrilled at what he said. If I go, if I stay, the victory's mine. I'm a winner either way. If I go, or if I stay, for I still have my Jesus each passing day. I have my healing here below, or life forever, if I go, oh praise the Lord, I'm a winner either way, well none of us, we really know about tomorrow. We must prepare to go to heaven any day. But while we're here, it's just the Lord. He'll lead us safe to our reward. And by His grace, we'll be a winner either way. I'm a winner either way If I 
I go or if I stay. For I still have my Jesus each passing day. I have my healing here below or life forever if I go. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm a winner either way. Yes, I'm a winner either way. If I go or if I stay, for I still have my Jesus each passing day. I have my healing here below, or life forever if I go. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm a winner either way. Yes, praise the Lord, I'm a winner either way. Honestly, this uh, this next song, uh, I've been praying for my wife's grandma for a long time that she'd get saved, and she's saved now, and I'm awfully happy about that. She got out of the hospital after being in there for a month or so yesterday. Her number one goal when she got home was to go to church tonight, so... Uh, I've got a job at the radio station. I got to be there at one today, and it's a gospel radio station. I get to play music for people and preaching for people that might not be able to get out to church today. So I, I consider that a ministry in itself. But um, so I've got to take my wife to work today. That way we can make it to Laurelville. I get off at six ten, and I've got to get to Laurelville or past Laurelville by seven. She uh, requested me to do this song for her, and I've never sung it, and I honestly don't know what key I'm going to do it in. So I'm just going to try it out here on you this morning. <laughs> All right? I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it in A flat. If anything, it'll be too low. If I surveyed all the good things that came to me from above, if I count all the blessings from a storehouse of love, I'd simply ask for the favor of him beyond mortal peace. And I'm sure that he'd grant it for me. I once strolled over heaven with you some glad day when all our troubles and heartaches are vanished away. things I know I want to stroll over heaven with you I'm actually going to take it up here so many places of beauty we long to see here below but time and treasures have kept us from making plans as we know. But come the morning of the rapture, together we'll stand anew. As I stroll through heaven with you, I want to stroll over heaven. With you some glad day 
When all our troubles and our heartaches are vanished away, then we'll enjoy the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll through heaven with you. I want to stroll. I'm just going to do one more for you here. E flat. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. It's what a day that will be when my Jesus asks you see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through that promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There will be sorrow there no more burdens to bear no more sickness and no more pain there's no parting over there and forever I will be with the one who died for me what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my Jesus asks you see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through that promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Yes, what a day, glorious day that will be. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that it saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see When we've been there Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun We've no last day to sing God's praise and when we first begun praise God praise God praise 
Praise God, 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 praise God. Praise God, praise God. Let's do it just once more. Praise God, 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 praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, he's worthy of our praise, isn't he? Somebody else got a song or testimony for us? Somebody testify while she's coming up here. The Lord just does so much for me. That just hard to speak what he say what he does do for us. For me, for me in particular, he's with me every day, driving with me wherever I go. Just keep me safe. I can 
Somebody else got a song or a testimony this morning? Amen. Amen. Bless you, brother. Somebody else? If that's all you got, stand. We call the pastor. Psalm chapter 145 this morning, continuing with Stand this morning, preaching on the letter N out of Stand this morning. Psalms 145, I appreciate the songs, I appreciate the testimonies. thought we had a really good Sunday school lesson this morning, but it's time to uh, bring God's Word this morning. I'd ask this morning just for your prayers. I've heard preachers say, well, you know, if you pray for me, I'm going to preach anyhow. If you pray, don't pray for me, I'm going to preach anyhow. So, uh, but I covet your prayers this morning that God would just use us as pleasing Him. Psalm 145, and so let's start at verse 13. He said, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raises up all those that are bowed down, be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand, and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him. He also will hear their cry. He will save them. And the Lord preserveth all them that love Him. But all the wicked will He destroy. But my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless His holy name forever and ever. Lord, we love You, we praise You, we exalt You. And I pray, God, for a few minutes this morning, God, that You would touch this vessel of clay. God, you'll anoint your servant with power from on high. Lord, I realize today there's no message preached unless the preacher come and do the preaching today, Lord. I'll ask today, God, as you use this vessel, Lord, as pleases you, Lord, that your name might be glorified. Your name might be praised. Your people may be encouraged. Your church may be edified. In Jesus' most holy and precious name, we pray this morning in amen and amen. You may be seated. We live in a world, a society today that tries to tell us whether there, there is no God. Amen. Listen, now I want you to listen what this word said here in verse 18. It said, The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon him. Let me give you the definition real quick of what that word nigh means today. It means close or near today. When I think about that today, and I realize, amen, the Bible tells me that no man has seen God at any time. And I realize again, it said Moses had talked with God as a friend face to face. But we have to understand that there was a glory cloud, amen, that separated the face of God and the face of Moses there. For he felt Though Moses himself as they communed there for days he said God I want to see your face he said Moses you can't look on my face and live amen for no man amen listen but he said there's a place in the cleft to the rock I'll place my hand over you and when I pass by I'll move my hand you can see the hinder part I don't know about you today but I'm glad that the Lord is nigh amen when I think about that phrase today. Amen. That the Lord is nigh unto them that call upon Him. Amen. Listen, I am earnest. Amen. To believe today that we don't have to. Amen. Listen to yell for God to hear our cries. I realize sometimes in praying we get loud. Singing we get loud. Preaching we get loud. I realize that God's not deaf and you're not either. Amen. But God did choose a foolishness of preaching. Amen. To save them that would believe. 
believe. Another scripture said that he is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Amen. Listen to them that he will in no wise cast out. I'm glad today, brother, that he's a prayer away. I'm glad he's just a prayer. Amen. Listen, well, how far does a prayer need to go, preacher? Amen. Before God hears. Amen. Listen, I realize today. Amen. Listen, the prayer. Amen. Listen, when we think of praying, we think of praying out loud. Amen. But you remember when Hannah, in the book of Samuel chapter 1, amen, and she entered into the house of God, the Bible said she went over to the side of the post and she bowed herself to the earth and she began to pray. And as she prayed, amen, her lips moved, but there was no sound of them. I'm telling you today, amen, you can pray a Pharisee prayer. Amen. Listen, this loud from the lips. Make great show before men. Amen. That God cannot hear and God will not hear. But when you pray from the desire, a sincere desire from the heart, as Hannah prayed there that day in that temple, we realize today that Eli said, A woman, a while thou one of the daughters of Belial, why are you drunk? See, and it's just a, a third hour of the day. And she said, My Lord, I'm not drunk, but I poured out my heart to God. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you today, my friend, prayer is not the condition of your body. Amen. It's not the condition or how much a noise coming out of your mouth, but it's a condition of the heart. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon Him. Amen. Listen, in our distress, amen, you remember when Peter was walking on the water, he saw Jesus had been asleep in the boat. Amen. Jesus Jesus sent them to the other side and he went on the mountain and prayed. And the man in the fourth watch of the night, and then somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., Jesus came walking on the water. And as though he would pass by, and somebody said, Hey, it's the Lord. And Peter said, Lord, if it's bid you, if it's you, bid me to come unto you. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, Come. And the Bible said, and Peter uh, stepped out of the boat. Uh, and then you realize a big problem. Hey, all the 11, hey man, they couldn't get out of the boat. I'm telling today, my friend, it's not about Peter sinking. Hey man, it's about Peter getting out of the boat. Hey, what are you saying? Peter, to get out of the boat, he had to take a stand. Hey man, he's had to stand up in the boat. He had to step over the boat. He had to stand on the water. Hey man, the Bible said that he walked on the water and to go to Jesus. Why, preacher? Because Jesus was nigh and when he saw the wind and the waves that they were boisterous the Bible said that he began to sink amen listen now we imply there that he took his eyes off the master amen I don't read that in the word of God so I'm telling you amen we have a thing called a peripheral vision amen listen I think Peter was amazed amen listen at what was going on but all of a sudden just as our life my life and your Life, the devil begins to sow that little seed of grain of mustard seed of doubt in the mind of Peter that he's walking on the water and he began to sink. I'm telling you, I don't know that it was a wave that rolled between them. All I know is somehow Peter began to sink when he lost faith. But when he cried out, Amen, Lord, save me. The Bible said Jesus had a wave under his feet and he picked Peter up and he put Peter back in the ship. Why? Because Peter took a stand. And then don't criticize Peter. Criticize the other eleven. At least he tried today. Amen. Amen. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon his name today. I want you to understand something. I realize. Amen. I have no idea exactly where heaven is located at. Amen, but I know this, amen, God hears my prayer. He's close enough 
that he can hear my prayer. He's close enough, amen, that he sees the tears that roll down my cheek when I'm hurting. He's close enough, Brother John, that he can put his arms around me and I can feel his presence and know his love is there. Oh, I'm telling you today, amen, listen, sometimes, amen, he's close enough that he whispers peace, amen, in my ear. Amen, you remember when we were children, amen, listen, you still see it today, child's out playing. Amen, listen, you fall and you scrape your knee. Joe, what did mommy do? Mommy would pick you up. She'd dust your knee off. First thing she'd do, she'd say everything is going to be all right. And she'd pull her arms around you and pull you close and just whisper it. It's okay, it's okay. I'm telling you today, my friend, if you'll stand for Jesus, I'm not saying that the wolves won't howl. Amen. But I'm telling you today, the wolf has no power over the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. All the other verses that are in between, all of that. Understand this, my friend. The devil cannot get to a child of God that's standing firm amen in Jesus Christ today amen the Lord is not unto them sorry amen the scripture tells us amen Paul in his writing he said for I am persuaded that neither there's another end word for you that neither height nor death nor principalities nor angels nor things present nor things to come Amen. Listen, nothing shall be able to separate us. There's another N word for you. Nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Why is it? Amen. Because he's my sword. He's my shield. He's my buckler. He's my high tower. He is my defense. Everything that I need, God is today. So therefore I can stand. Paul said he had done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you today, church, if there's ever a time we need to stand and know that we're not a alone today. He promised us. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, but I will go with you all the way, even to the end. There's a word never in there. I'm glad he's near. I'm glad he's nigh today, my friend. And nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus today. No weapon formed against you. There's another N word for you. No weapon formed against you, according to the word of God, shall prosper today. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying stand when everything else falls apart. I'm saying stand when everybody forsakes you. I'm saying stand. I'm telling you today, amen, the writer said, the old men forsake me, then will the Lord not forsake me, but he will take up my cause. Why is that? I am his and he's mine. That's why he's my defense. That's why he will take up my calls today. Will you say it? I'm saying he fights my battles for me today. You know why? Because I can't win, Brother Charlie. Hey, Amen. You ever had one of them days you just can't win for losing? Hey, Amen. Listen, it seems like I have more of them than I do the ones I shout the victory. Hey, Amen. It seems like when everything else around us is falling apart, I'm glad today that I can still stand and proclaim, hey, Amen, and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hey, Amen. Amen. Here's a name for you, a word for you. Amen. That my name is written in his book. That's why I can stand and say I'm saved. It's not because of the life that I live. It's because of the death he died on the cross, my friend. It's because the blood he placed. The Bible said, for God hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And of the glory of God the Father. Having done all to stand, stand there for. I'm telling you, church, amen, God is right there. All you've got to do is stand. If he says go, amen, he's gone before you today. You up and go on your own, you're in trouble. Amen, but if you ask God to lead, and the Bible said the steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. What does that mean, preacher? Amen, that means that God gives direction. 
Amen. That God will guide today, today. Their problem with most people is they want to tell God what to do. Amen. Again, we have a bunch of people that run around in churches today commanding God to do this, commanding the Holy Spirit to do that. I'm telling you today, listen, brother, we don't have the power to do that. We don't have the authority. We don't have the option to do that. Amen. That's like for me trying to tell my dad to do something. Amen. Listen, I, I, that's not my place today. Amen. My father was over me. I don't care how old he was. Amen. Listen, he will steal my elder today. We other people have lost all respect for God, all respect for God's Son, all respect for the Holy Spirit. How we live in a world today, amen, where they bow to everything, amen, and stand for everything that's against God, amen, or for, uh, stand against God for everything. I'm telling you today, I'd rather stand for Jesus and let the world go by and have all the world hate me than I would to be loved by the world and to hear Him say, Depart, I never knew you. There's another N word for you, never. Amen. Having done all to stand, stand. Why? Because the Lord's near. The Lord's near. Remember? Again, back at the Red Sea, stand. Why? God, listen. God wasn't just up in heaven saying, All right, boys, you find your best way around. God, listen. God was so big that he had one hand back here protecting him from the enemy. And over here he was blowing his breath to dry up the Red Sea all night long as he just had parted the waters. Amen. And he's looking down from heaven. He's giving them light, putting them into their enemies in darkness today. I'm telling you today, brother, we serve a big God. Don't you make anything. Amen. Listen too hard for God. To him that believeth all things are possible today. Nothing shall be able. Amen. Listen, or nothing shall be impossible. Amen. To them that believe. So do you believe? Do you believe? Paul said, for I am ready now to be offered. Time of my departure is now at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Not for me, not for me only. Not, not for me only. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only preacher that still stands for the truth. This is not the only church where people can be saved, where people worship God. We're not the only denomination that's right when it comes to the doctrine of the Bible. Amen. Listen today, friend. We've got to understand today, we are not alone. Amen. I preached this last night, and I'm going to say it again today. When John saw in the book of Revelation, John saw a number. There's an end word for you. A number that no man can number today. We are not by ourselves. We are not defeated. We are not going down. Brother, the church is a victorious church. Now I want you to know the gates of hell shall not prevail against it today. I understand this today, my friend. Amen. That God has never lost a battle and He's not about to start today. So why not stand? You see, we think today that we're in our jobs because of our qualifications or whatever it is but we're there for one purpose to bring glory to God to be a witness to others to tell somebody about the good things the Lord has done for him come on all things work together for the good of those that love him and to them that are called according to his purpose it's not my words we are there for a reason. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. When God puts you in opportunity, it's there to let your light shine. You know why God allowed Job to be tempted? Not to hurt Job. That God's name might be glorified. Because when they come, and the friends that come, come to accuse Job, God said, boys, I mean, God spoke to them, other three boys, as well as he did Job. He said, I want to know you to tell you something about my servant, Job. Amen. There's not a fault in him. And you fellows better pray that he prays for you and offers up sacrifice for you because if he don't, you'll hurt him. Now, I realize today that's not exactly what the words of Scripture use. That's what God said in those verses. Be careful what you say about a child of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what if he turned out to be Elijah? 
children were out mocking Elijah one day and said, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he called down two she bears out of the woods and destroyed them all. All those children, I mean, just tore them up, eat them. The Lord is nigh. The Lord is nigh. Here's another one. The day of the Lord is nigh at hand. If the Lord comes back today, have we done all we could do? Could you be like Paul and say, God, I've fought a good fight. I've kept my course. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. Because you see, we do have to give an answer. I realize we give an answer here for the hope that lies within us. One day, know ye not that ye all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We all. There's no not one that doeth good. Don't that scare you? No, not one. Are to make us thankful for grace. Are to make us thank, more thankful. You wonder why the men like to love to sing 422? Do you listen to the words? I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe. And whatever the cost. You see, for God so loved me. Put yourself there. That He gave His only begotten Son that I would not perish. But that I could have, have everlasting life. Do you believe? Are you standing firm on the Word of God? Does the world have to doubt? Will you stand with God? Do they, I mean, do they know beyond the shadow of a doubt? Do they really know that you are a Christian? Not that you go to church. <laughs> I know some people that go to church that just don't bear any fruit. Uh, come on now. And if that fruit's empty, it's dead. If there's no fruit on that tree, it's a dead tree. Matter of fact, Scripture teaches a parable. It said there was a man came to a tree and he said to the good man, he said, cut it down. I've come three years from fruit from this tree searching for fruit. It's not bar any. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Why is it wasting space? Are we wasting space on God's earth? Are we wasting the breath that God gives us? Or are we pointing others to Christ by our stance? Is it popular? You remember the same when we were kids? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, ain't that the biggest lie that's ever been told? Sticks and stones will hurt you, or, or, or words will hurt you far more than ever sticks and stones. And that, and that wound will last a lot farther. I, don't re I, I remember but vaguely when I was four years old. We used to have a cable spool at our house. I guess my dad probably had brought it from, from the mines. We would get up on top of that thing and we were jumping off. And you know, it was only yay high. Oh, but you know, I was doing that one for the money and two for the show. Three to get ready and go, cat, go. You remember that? Young people don't know nothing about that. Boys, I went to jump. My older sister pushed me. And I went out like this. My arm folded right across a rock. I remember my dad splinting it. I vaguely remember him taking me to the hospital. I don't remember any of that pain. But I tell you what, I've had some things said that I remember that pain. You say, Preacher, did you forgive? Oh, absolutely. I don't mean you forget what happened. Come on. Amen. Scars. We all have got battle scars, but here's the thing. You know what a scar proves? A scar proves you've been in battle and survived. That's what a scar proves. That means that you healed. There's still a mark there. I've got a mark on my hand right here. You know what happened? I was ripping a board. To put up, I was building in for a, a, a to put a screen door on an old house. I had to fill it in because it's just too wide. So I was ripping this board down where it fit exactly right. I want it to look good. I don't want to cobble it up. So I'm ripping this board down and the break on my saw doesn't work when I let off the trigger. So I scooped the board back and the blade's turning. And the saw jumped up and I mean just that quick got me twice. Three stitches right there and four stitches right there. Still got the scar. But you know what? I survived. I survived a broken arm. I said, Charlie has survived cancer. 
Come on. Sister Judy has survived cancer. I'm telling you, we can go around this room about how that God, I'm telling you, I, when I'm telling you I about died, I had a nurse look at me and said, you're still here? I've survived salmonella. Well, listen, we have survived car wrecks, automobile accidents, amen? All these other things where we could have been destroyed. All these other battles. The things that's been said about us that really hurt us, I mean, that tore us down. We're still here. We're still in the fight. That's a battle-hardened soldier. Here's the thing about a battle-hardened soldier. He's always watching for the enemy. That young soldier, that this is his first battle, he's scared to death. He has no idea what to expect. But you see, them that's been in the battle a few times, they kind of know. And as a child of God, they've even been saved 20 some years. Now you kind of know where the devil's going to come at you. What is he going to say? What is he going to... You, you come out and know he's next. Very seldom. If you've been a Christian for 20 years, very seldom does the devil catch you off guard. Amen? We know the laws and we know how to overcome him. You know why we can do that? We've got the scars. We're still standing. Tell the world today, let's stand. Stand with me. Jesus is coming. Stand with me, world. Love the Lord with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind. Thy... If any man love the world, he's an enemy of God. If you love the things of the world more than you love God, that's an enemy of God today. You're an enemy of God. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. Preacher, did you write that? Nope. It's in the book. Because God's near. The Bible said, The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open under their cry. That man knows one of the hardest things you ever do is let your teenager get in that car and watch him drive out of the driveway first time. Uh huh. It's fun, isn't it, Gary? Uh huh. How many watched your clock the whole time they was gone? How many worried the whole time they were gone? How many still worry about your kids? <laughs> and they're grown adults. You still worry. Why do you worry? Because you care. Your heavenly Father cares more about you than He does the sparrows. And He sees every sparrow that falls to the ground. He sees every flower that fades away. And He cares more about you than He does those flowers. There's nothing that you and I go through that God doesn't see and God doesn't care. Although we may feel alone. Have you ever felt alone? You know that God's there, but you still feel like you're alone. You know, that's when He's the closest. Because I'm telling you, in those moments of time, all you got to do is say, Lord, I need you. How many witness to the fact that all of a sudden the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I can't go any farther. He'll come in. He's nigh today, friend. If you're not a Christian, you have no idea what I'm talking about. If you're not saved and the Holy Spirit's not indwelling on the inside, you don't have a clue. Amen? Maybe you're like my brother back here. Maybe you've been coming for a year and a half and don't know who Jesus is. Amen? But when you get a taste of him, you can't keep quiet. Brad, don't ever lose that, son. Don't ever, don't ever sit there and say they're tired of hearing my testimony. You stand and you brag on the Lord. Tell the good things. Amen. Tell how good it is to be here. I don't know about you. I'd rather be here than any hospital or funeral home around. Amen. They even said I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You can't say that if you're not saved. If, you've got a, if you're a child of God and the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside, Brother, come Sunday morning, you're ready for church. Come Wednesday night, you're ready for church. Sunday night, you're ready for church. Come revival night, you're ready for church. How good and pleasant is it for brother and dwell together in unity in the house of the Lord. Something special about it. But to them that don't know Jesus, that don't know what we know, this is foolishness. There's no sense in it. I remember being told, oh, you just... You just take it too serious. 
You just go too far. I tell you what, if I'm crazy about Jesus, let me go off the deep end. More and more about Jesus, let me learn. Let me ever learn. Let me ever yearn to have more and more. What about it today? Are you saved? I can't answer that question for you. So I look across this congregation, all I can see is expression on your face. I can't see what's inside. You can put a smile on, you can put a happy face on, but what's on the inside? You see, that's what matters. Is the inside empty or is the inside full? I'm telling you, my cup don't always run over, amen, but it's always full. No, regardless, amen, it don't take much, Brother Johnny, for my cup to run over and out of my eyes today. Why? Because God has been good to this old boy. Let's stand today. Susie, come give a song. If you're not a Christian today, I don't know of a better time. Know that God is not...